All right, guys, so I'm going to be showing you guys step by step on how you can overclock your GPU for free. And the software I'm using is actually free to download. I'll drop a link to it down below. It's called Cam. And also, we're going to be using the benchmark tool, Unigen Heaven Benchmark. And I'll also leave a link to that down below. But it's really easy, you guys. Honestly, a lot of people think it's difficult to overclock your hardware. Uh, CPU and GPU especially are extremely easy. And I will show you guys how to do that. And also, if you guys want a tutorial on how to overclock the CPU as well, let me know by dropping a comment down below. So, uh, before we get into the overclocking, it's really important to understand the software that you're going to use to overclock. So, as I mentioned before, this is the NZXT Cam 3.1. And once again, I will leave a link down below so you guys can download. It's completely free. And this is basically the program we're going to be using to monitor, t uh, monitor the GPU as well as overclock it. So let's quickly go over the tabs uh, on the dashboard tab. You guys can see the temperature, the load on both the CPU and graphics card. And then down below there, you can see the RAM and also all the programs that are running in the background. As you can see, Cam Client is currently running and how much RAM is being used and how much uh, what the load percentage is. And then on the right side over here, as you can see the storage space. So how much storage is used and how much you have uh, free space in your hard drive. So moving on to the advanced tab, you guys can check out the hardware in more detail. So you guys have options for CPU, GPU, motherboard, RAM, hard drives, and the internet. And so uh, for this video purposes, I'm going to be using CPU and GPU. And down here, you guys can check the minimum and maximum temperatures. You can check out the clock speeds, the memory, and just a bunch of really useful information that we're going to be using. And then if you hit expand, a little window will pop up and basically giving you guys even more in-depth uh, details. So you, can, you guys can check out each core for the CPU. Again, like the core clock, multiplier, bus speed, and all that. So, But we're not going to be using this uh, tab at all. Now, if you hit the maximize button, everything will expand. Uh, right now, it kind of uh, expands over the screenshot area that I'm using. But basically, everything that I've shown you guys is expanded into one window. So instead of hitting tabs, you can see everything. So moving on to the build tab, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is where uh, your PC specs are listed. You have your processor, video card, motherboard, and all that good stuff, as well as your PC name. Uh, moving on to the games tab, basically it will show the games that you recently played on your PC. And what's great about this is actually you can see the duration played, the start time, and also your minimum and average FPS. So if you're benchmarking a game, for example, you can always refer to this chart and then record those numbers. So if you're benchmarking a specific game, you can check out the average FPS and it's just very helpful. And finally, the last tab, which is the tab we're going to be using is the tuning tab. And this is where we're going to be overclocking the graphics card, but more on this tab later. So if you guys click on the cogwheel up here and go to settings, there are some useful options here that you can enable. If you go to FPS overlay, there's an option here where you can overlay information in a game. So let's say if you want to check out the current FPS, the GPU load, the memory clock, core clock, and all that good information, you can check it through this uh, settings menu here. You can change the color uh, using the font color over here. Obviously it's RGB, uh, but for, well, for this video, I'm gonna keep it yellow. And you can, uh, you can basically display the information you want during the game. You can have FPS come up, average FPS, memory, and all that stuff. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to just disable most of this and just keep the GPU and the FPS. You can also overlay the position. So you can put it to top right, bottom right, any corner you desire. And that's you can also even set up a toggle so you can disable it while you're in game. And then you just save changes. So another really cool feature, or I should say add-on that comes with Cam, is actually their free app, which you can download for Android or iOS. Basically it gives you the option to monitor your PC when you're away from your computer. So you can open up the app and you can check out the current stats, the CPU, GPU load, uh, the temperature, the percentage of load, and you guys can even check out uh, the recent games played on it. Another really neat feature you guys can do is get notifications on your phone, let's say if you're CPU or GPU pass a certain threshold. So if you go to settings and then go to notifications tab over here, you can basically manually select what uh, threshold you want. For example, if your CPU passes the, the 75 degrees Celsius 
or if your GPU passes 73 degrees Celsius, you will get a notification on your phone. So since this is a beginner's guide, I'm going to be showing you guys the easy way to overclock your GPU. And there is a more advanced way which involves uh, messing with the voltage to increase the clock speed and memory speed of the GPU. But for, this sake, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it simple for you guys. And we're going to be using this program and just stick with the core clock and memory clock. We're not going to be messing with voltage. So I basically overclocked this GPU before I started this video so I know what the maximum limit is. But I went ahead and reset the settings and I'm going to be showing you guys uh, from the beginning basically what I did. All right, so we basically have five sections in this tab. We have power limit, core clock, memory clock. We have the GPU fan profile and down here we have uh, the stats. We have the core clock, memory clock, GPU temps and the fan speed. So for the power limit, we're going to keep this at 100%. This basically allows you to draw more or less watts for your GPU. But we're going to keep it 100% and we're going to be focusing on core clock for now. So we're not going to be touching the power limit. This basically allows you to draw more or less watts for your GPU. But we're not going to mess with that for now. And we're going to be messing around with the core clock uh, majority of the time. Because this basically impacts the GPU the most. And this is what will give you uh, the most frames. Right now it is on default 1607 megahertz and that depends on your GPU whether you have an AMD or an Nvidia. Also make sure that your graphics card is overclockable otherwise uh, this tutorial will not work. So typically people do increments of uh, 25 to 100 but for the sake of this video I'm going to keep it simplified and I'm going to do increments of 50 megahertz. So I'm going to put in uh, 50 on here and I'm gonna go and hit save changes also make sure to apply tuning when system starts That way you guys don't have to always overclock your GPU when you restart your system So hit save changes again and now we're gonna be using the heaven benchmark This is the benchmarking tool I use to well <laughs> benchmark the GPU and make sure it runs stable um, If it crashes obviously then that's when we're gonna be adjusting the settings a bit so I'm gonna hit run I usually typically leave it on 1080p, but you guys can do 2K or even 4K if you want. So I hit run. Even before you hit benchmark, uh, your GPU will start working as of now. So if it crashes at this point, then obviously you have to lower the settings, but it shouldn't crash because we're only increasing it by 50 megahertz. So I'm just kind of showing you guys an example. So while you're running benchmarks, you want to keep an eye on your GPU temperature and your core clock. So right now we're hovering around 1830 to 1850 with the core clock and our GPU temp is about 82 degrees Celsius Which is pretty hot, but it's not crashing. Everything's running fine So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the benchmarking You can exit the program completely, but I usually just keep it running in the background But make sure you're not benchmarking so if you hit the escape button it will stop benchmarking So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna increase it again by another 50 so we're gonna bring it up to hundred which will bring us uh, to a core clock of 1707. So here we go, hitting save settings, uh, save changes again. And as you can see, it's not crashing. So we're gonna go ahead and benchmark. Usually I will leave it here for a few minutes or a full cycle and then I would come back. So I'll be right back. All right, so it's not crashing. Uh, we're gonna stop the benchmarking now. And again, we're gonna be increasing it by another 50. So that should be actually 150 because we were at 100 before. So this will give us 1757 for the core clock. We're gonna hit save changes again. Usually when you hit save changes and normally the GPU would crash after a few seconds. Uh, but if it's not crashing, that's a good sign that it can handle those settings. And once again, we're gonna hit the benchmark option. All right, so still no crashes. Uh, now we're gonna jump this up to 200 megahertz and then we're gonna hit save changes and then we're gonna benchmark. All right, so still no crashes. We're gonna exit out of the benchmark and I can't hit 250. I can't, I should say, hit 250 on this card. Otherwise it will crash. The actual limit is 225. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it at 225 because anything above that will crash the GPU. So I'm gonna hit save changes just to show you guys that it can handle a core clock of 1832. And I'm gonna hit benchmark real quick. So we're getting a core clock of 1924, which is 1930, sometimes 1950, which is pretty good considering that this is the 
uh, EVGA Founders Edition GTX 1080. All right, so once you're happy with your core clock, now we're gonna move down and mess with memory clock. Uh, over here, you guys can do, again, increments of 50, but to speed things up, I'm gonna do 100 and then move on from there. So we'll start off with 100, hit save changes again. Same concept, basically, it's rinse and repeat. You do the benchmarking and then you cycle, uh, you cycle upwards until you find the most stable memory clock. So for this GPU, I actually maxed it out to 500. So I'm just gonna put 500 here. As you can see, you can't dial it any more than that. So I'm gonna save changes. I'm gonna show you guys benchmarking. So basically the settings you're looking at now are the max settings for my specific GPU. And of course, uh, these settings will vary depending on your GPU, even if you do have the uh, Founders Edition of the GTX 1080. Every, every graphics card is different. So for my core clock, I was able to achieve 1832 megahertz. And for memory clock, I was able to achieve 1500, which is basically max. So I'm definitely happy with these numbers. So basically, once you achieve the numbers that you're happy with, you can run a more intense benchmark or a longer benchmark. I think anywhere from an hour to two hours is fine. Um, but basically, if you're playing a game, let's say, and your GPU crashes, obviously the settings you have is a little too much. So you have to go back on the program and dial down the the numbers a bit. If your GPU is running on the hotter side, like it is in this video, for example, it's hitting 82 degrees Celsius, which is more than I would want on a GPU. Normally I try and aim for the low 70s. What you guys can do is go to the fan profile over here, click on change mode, go to fixed, and you can adjust the actual fan speed on your graphics card. So for example, I'm gonna put it around 90% and hit save changes. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the fan is on basically full blast. And we can see the temperature right now um, lowering as we speak, or as I speak, I should say. So this, should def this definitely helps the temps, but in return, you guys do get a much louder GPU. So, so yeah, there are definitely benefits of increasing fan speed. Uh, you get obviously lower temps for your GPU, but at the same time, you get a much louder GPU and a louder overall system. So that just depends on you and the case that you have. So if you're okay with hearing a jet engine next to you, then you can keep uh, the fan on full blast, but. All right guys, so that's basically how you overclock your GPU. I know that was a lot of information, so I'll go ahead and recap this real quick. Uh, you would leave the power limit alone and you would start with the core clock and increase it by increments of 50, as I've shown you in the video. You would hit save changes and then you would run the benchmark. If the GPU doesn't crash, then you would go back and you would increase it by another 50. So you'd go to 100, so on so forth, until you find a point where it crashes. Let's say it crashes at 200. Well, I would go back and lower it by 25 instead of 50. So then it would be 175. And then repeat that process until you find a stable core clock. Once you find your stable core clock, you would move down to memory clock and do the same exact thing. Uh, once again, you start from 50, then you go to 100, then 150, then 200. So let's say it crashes at 400 megahertz. Then I would basically lower it down by 25 instead of 50. So it would be 375 instead. Uh, again, same process. You know, you would save changes and then run the benchmarks. Once you find the uh, settings you are happy with, that's when I would either play a game for like about 30 minutes, I would say, or run a benchmark for about 30 minutes to an hour. Now, let's say you're getting extremely low core clock and memory clock. What you guys can do is mess with the power limit and you can ingre uh, increase the bar. You can even increase it up to 110%. And then you would go down and do the exact same thing for the core clock and memory clock. And most of the time, you will get um, higher clock speeds if you adjust the power limit. That basically lets the Gravis card uh, bring out or receive more power than stock. That's what the power limit does. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to drop them down in the comment section down below. And feel free to experiment with this because this is really, uh, really easy to do and pretty much anybody can do it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these type of videos and want to see a, how to overclock CPU, hopefully a shorter video, uh, let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video.